are new questions about the health of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un after his absence from Army Day celebrations in North Korea on Saturday. This is the second major holiday that the Supreme Leader has missed in recent weeks. On April 11th, state-run media released images of Kim holding a coronavirus planning meeting. Four days later, Kim was uncharacteristically absent during one of the most sacred holidays in North Korea, missing the Day of the Sun celebrations, which honored the late grandfather and founder of North Korea, Kim Il-sung. So in his absence, rumors have circulated about the Supreme Leader's health. Some have even questioned if the North Korean leader is still alive. So for more on this, I want to bring in Alex Ward. He's a staff writer at Fox covering international security and defense issues. Alex, we know that Kim has pre-existing health issues. What are you hearing is the latest on his health and well-being? So we're still in the rumor phase. Uh, that said, there are reports that there may be Chinese medical officials coming into North Korea to perhaps consult on his health status. Uh, but the rumors are really everywhere at this point. They range from he's just fine and recovering at a nearby facility, that he's gravely ill and maybe on the verge of death, and even that he is dead. Uh, and so it's really hard to know right now, it's all speculation, but uh, at the moment, the notion of, oh, he may be in real trouble, that seems to have dissipated more in recent days. Well, North Korean media has been extremely tight-lipped about the status of Kim. Some outlets have even gone as far as publishing some of his old statements in an effort to maintain a sense of normalcy. Can you tell us and explain to our viewers why we're so in the dark about what's actually going on there? So a couple of reasons. The first would be that intelligence is really hard to come by in North Korea. And so it, even though the United States intelligence officials I speak to say, we're doing okay, we have enough stuff, uh, it is always really hard to know the inner workings of the Kim regime, and especially his health and who's around him. The other is the culture of the secrecy of the country. Uh, every in piece of information is tightly controlled. There's a large propaganda campaign. A lot of what comes out of the country is based on rumor. And so it's hard to confirm really anything, especially something as tightly guarded as the leader's health. So between a lack of information and the way North Korea actually operates, it's just really hard to get a sense of what's going on in that country. Yeah, I, I thought that um, the idea that they were releasing old statements seemed particularly strange. Is that the first time that North Korean state-run media has done that? It's not. They tend to do it uh, when there's nothing new to announce, uh, in the same way that American media sometimes goes, President Trump said XYZ thing uh, a couple of days ago. What's interesting now is though that since we have not seen images of Kim at the army parade on Saturday and especially at the ceremony for his grandfather on the 15th in a massive holiday in North Korea, it is legit speculation that he is not around, of course. Uh, we don't see new images of him, speculation as to why he's not around, and so it seems like there's a filler happening that as state-run media sort of scrambles on what to say and what to do, uh, they obviously can't say what's going on with Kim, which is what fuels speculation, but they're just trying to kind of fill in uh, information at the time. And this obviously isn't the first time that Kim has disappeared from the public view. Um, but there's something actually that's a bit different about this. Can you explain that to our viewers? What's, what's really different is how he's missing these major holidays. Um, again, the fact that he uh, is not around for the biggest celebration for his grandfather, Day of the Sun, for this army uh, situation, and of course that we know that he's just in general bad health. Uh, so that's what makes this a bit different And uh, in terms of just him now. Why are we sort of all speculating so wildly? Um, well, part of it is because we don't know what comes next. Uh, it, well, who would take charge if Kim Jong-un were to be incapacitated or in fact dead? Would it be his sister, Kim Yo-jung, uh, who he has given immense power and she, she herself has put out statements um, under her own name and of course met with uh, officials including South Korean President Moon Jae-in. It could be a brother, it could be uh, who had been passed on before, it could be a military general. The scenarios in the United States are actually quite troubling. Uh, because if Kim is alive and things kind of continue as normal, if it's a new leader, there could be some internal tensions as to how that person consolidates power. And if he's dead, you can see a power struggle, uh, one that we haven't really ever seen in North Korea. And especially, as experts tell me, if the military were to take over, um, that could prove quite dangerous to the United States, especially since troops in North Korea tend to be a bit more antagonistic towards the United States. And this obviously isn't the first time either that um, that when there has been a problem with a leader's health uh, in North Korea that it's been kept 
private from the rest of the world. Uh, when uh, Kim Jong-un's father died, it was two days before we learned about it at all. Um, and, and at that point, it wasn't even clear that, uh, that Kim Jong-un would be the successor, necessarily. So what, can you tell us a little bit more about what those different lines of succession could potentially mean? We know how well he gets along with his sister. We know that he doesn't get along particularly well with his brother. Um, but also the idea that the military could come in, which you, which you started to mention. Give us a little bit more of that context and, and what it could mean for our viewers. Sure. So if you look at the way U.S. North Korea relations are going with these showpiece uh, events, summits between Trump and Kim, you want Kim to still be the leader. Uh, that would effectively continue our policy uh, under Trump. If Trump were to, uh, of course, be uh, lose to Biden, that could change. Biden said he would not meet with Kim. But if Trump were to win, one could see that policy continuing, even though Kim continues to make weapons. Um, if he were to be incapacitated, uh, which is something no one's really planned for, that Kim is still sort of around, but people are struggling for power. Well, that would lead to a pretty big fight, not only between sort of Kim's inner circle, and again, odds on favorite would be Kim Yo-jung and his sister on to take over, but that would be new for uh, uh, the regime. Again, someone who uh, kind of comes in based on a, after a sick uh, sibling in this case, and it would be a woman leading the country, which some people are skeptical, um, you know, might be seen as a legitimate leader, although that's ridiculous in a sense, <laughs> in many senses, actually. Um, and of course, Kim Yo-jung, whoever it may be, who would come in would have to start to try to consolidate power. I mean, dictators have politics too. Trying to get a lot of people in the party in line, getting the military to follow the rule, that's all difficult. And if the military were to take over, um, and they can because they have a lot of influence and power, almost any image of Kim Jong-un, especially when he's doing missile tests you see with generals around clapping and celebrating, um, they have to show legitimacy to the people. They also like using military tools and tend to uh, be more antagonistic towards the United States. And so some people worry that they could launch an uh, ICBM, an intercontinental ballistic missile, even further than North Korea already has, perhaps closer to the United States. And at that point, it'd be really hard for Trump or Biden or really any American leader to ignore the North Korean threat, and we'd be in a much worse situation than we are now. It says that China has now sent a team of medical experts over to North Korea to take a look at Kim Jong-un. This comes as the North Korean leader's health remains unclear. For more insight, we're joined now by Bruce Klinger. He's a senior research fellow for Northeast Asia over at the Heritage Foundation. Uh, Bruce, thanks for joining us. We're seeing everything now bubbling up in terms of foreign reporting from Kim Jong-un is totally fine, recovered well from his surgery in mid-April too. He's actually in a vegetative state now, verging on death. Based on what is known publicly and based on what you know about the regime, what's your best guess as to where he actually is? Well, quite simply, we don't, don't know. As you point out, we've had rumors, uh, everything from he's dead, he's brain dead, uh, then U.S. intelligence saying that uh, he was seen walking around the port city of Wonsan several days ago and that he may have evacuated himself to the uh, Wonsan simply to avoid being uh, uh, infected by COVID. Uh, the Chinese medical team may be there to deal with COVID or if Kim has COVID or uh, others around him. So uh, we've had uh, initial reports which were downplayed by U.S., South Korean and Chinese officials, uh, but then we've seen this recent spate of humor rumors and we really don't know what's going on there. So we do know that he is 30, well, it is believed, estimated that he is 36 years old because the government never confirms his real age. Um, we also know from Western reporting and Western intelligence that he is in bad health. He has respiratory problems, heart problems. We know he had some kind of cardiac surgery in, in April. Um, tell us why at this moment, right, it, it, the North Korean leader being in bad health, potentially even passing, um, is something that the, you know, the U.S should care about that should grip our national attention amid this coronavirus pandemic seems like well, there's a whole lot of other things to worry about right well as was the case when his father passed away there's no formal succession plan in the north korean constitution uh, we don't know if they have something behind the scenes uh, so right now all of us are speculating who the next leader might be uh, there's not an obvious choice as when his father died and uh, kim jong-un had been groomed for about three years and uh, anointed as the next leader uh, we're speculating that his sister may be uh, the next leader. Uh, up until a few years ago, everyone would have thought that a strict Confucian Korean culture wouldn't allow a woman leader. Uh, but in the last couple of years, she's gained power, she's gained uh, authority, uh, and we've seen her coming out of the shadows, uh, really, for the, in the last couple of years. Uh, there's a uncle that, of Kim Jong-un, but he's been really exiled for about three decades in Eastern Europe, serving as ambassador to different countries. Uh, but he recently came back. So there's always concern when you have a nuclear weapon state, if you don't know who the next leader is, uh, it could be a, a smooth transition or it could be a power struggle where everyone's trying to grab the, the ring of power and then who has control of the nuclear weapons and the military. So it will be of great concern if, if Kim uh, dies without some formal succession plan. Are you worried about 
state collapse. Uh, Fox News spoke uh, to administration officials earlier in the week who said, um, you know, worst case scenario that accompanies a Kim Jong-un death is state collapse and we see huge numbers of people starving, facing starvation. We see North Koreans um, fleeing North Korea, flying across the um, Chinese border, creating a refugee crisis. Does that square with what you foresee or worry about? There are a lot of, of worst case scenarios. Uh, if, if there is a regime collapse and a struggle for power, uh, unknown actions by military factions warring against each other, uh, there's concern that there could be an explosion in the sense of North Korea lashing out against its neighbors or an implosion with the, the regime collapse and instability. Mm. Uh, that said, you know, we were equally concerned during the two previous uh, successions of the father and the grandfather when they passed away, and the system worked. There was a, a maintaining of, of stability, so I think it's more likely the regime will maintain.